Hello and welcome to this episode of the Guides with Glasses podcast. I'm Bandito John, and I have with me No Name Josh and Wise Joey D. Hey guys. How's it going? Hey. We haven't done the, our podcast for a few weeks. We've been crazy busy. Um, we were at uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Yep. And yeah, so, yeah that? Uh, it was a lot of fun. So my wife, she, uh, she has her own cosmetics business. And uh, we were selling there, and so it was like our first convention, you know, with like a booth and stuff. And uh, Josh was there helping us out, and um, it was awesome. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, we were on our feet like twelve hours a day for the three days. It was. It was crazy. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was there was a ton of good cosplay. I didn't really get to like see the show floor as much as as you did, Josh. Josh, was there any like cool booths or any? I spent way too much money. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came into that with like two hundred dollars and left with nothing. So. <laughs> yeah, you have to set a budget totally. I mean, uh, Joey, have you ever been to like a convention before? Like, only to PAX with you and and Maggie too. Yeah, oh, but all and, three, all all three of us. Yeah. And you went to Tokyo Game Show, right? Did you go with with Maggie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was blood. I was brilliant. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. but, didn't blow my budget, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what's kind of different. Like, PAX, I mean, you're there to, like, experience the games, and, the, and a lot of the booths might not sell stuff, but they're there to kind of give you demos. Mm-hmm. At Comic-Con, it's all about, like, spending money. It's like yeah. everybody is there to compete for your money. And it's so... Like, it's, it's like it, you're at the fireworks stand at, like, the Indian Reservation. Hey, come over here! Come over here! <laughs> yeah. You got the best deals! Screw that guy! <laughs> <laughs> it is very much like that. Um, you know, it's cool. I mean, there was, like... I mean, it's interesting that, like, two booths down from us is one of the artists from, like, My Little Pony. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, to the left of us is somebody else that, like, does a famous comic book. And then we're, we're all kind of equals there. We're all trying... We all have, like, the same size booth, and we're all just trying to, like, get people to stop by our stuff. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was fun. There was, like... There was this really geeky thing I wanted to get, but I didn't have a chance to. This is pretty awesome. It's a ring that's a D20 ring, and you oh, can spin yeah. it. And so it's, like, randomly doing a dice roll, like, yeah. on your... Wow! It was it was so geeky and so amazing. Yeah, so they had a booth on the main show floor. But yeah, they were like, we're not carrying any of the stuff here. You got to go to the Sheridan, <laughs> which is like three blocks away. Yeah, and it's like ah, okay, back there we go. Screw that. It's, but yeah, it was ridiculous. I'm like, it was a really cool ring. I totally it? wanted it. I know. I was, and then they had. I was a... like, I was gonna wear it all the time and just. Be... <laughs> <laughs> What's your fate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they had yeah, a life they... counter too. It was like it oh yeah, magic it, life it was counter. a ring. It was yeah. pretty awesome. And and Josh, you you got some signatures, right? Yeah, I got uh, Michael Bean's signature, and Cassie went and got uh, Carl Urban's. Mm. She was super excited. Could from barely Arrow? say a word to him. Is that the guy from Arrow, or is that the other guy from? Uh... That's the guy from Almost Human. Oh, or, almost. Yeah. yeah, Almost Human. And he's also Rohan's, like, son in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. It was, yeah. it was cool. And we have to do Sakura Con and another convention in a few weeks, so that's going to be fun. We're preparing for that one. And we have a bigger booth. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, you guys wow. got screwed out of a good booth. <laughs> yeah, you know, we kind of signed up, like, last minute because we originally weren't thinking about doing it, and then we were like, oh, is there any spots available, like, a couple months before? Normally, people reserve like a year in advance, so I was actually surprised that we even had a chance to get a booth. But um, yeah, it was fun, tiring, but it was good. It was it uh, was it was funny. They put them in, so they put them in like one corner, and then they alphabetically listed them wrong, so that yeah, in the, so in the manual, in the, yeah, yeah, so they weren't <laughs> in the same spot as it was listed as. It was it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, kind of disorganized a little bit, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. but. We did play some games. Uh, so, Joey D, you played some Metal Gear Solid. You want to talk about your review on that? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, well, I I turn it around on you guys and and ask firstly, have you played Metal Gear ever in in your long uh, illustrious gaming career? Yes, I played almost every Metal Gear. Do you oh, guys understand the plot? Do you guys know what's going on? No, no. <laughs> it's, you just gotta go game by game. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna be like. What's the overarching story? Yeah. You're going to get lost. It's like Zelda. You're just like, all these yeah. games like, just weave all over the place, so you don't have any idea. You know, it's I like... never really got into the series, but, you know, I know that uh, if you're a fan of sneaking around, you know, and kind of like taking out guides and hiding bodies, it can be awesome. But, um, 
Yeah, it's just I always find it really nerve wracking. My, my yes. first experience was on the the NES, so. Oh, old school. Yeah. Wow. They actually stole Michael Bean's image from Terminator and used it as the cover what? art. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's awesome. <laughs> I forgot to bring my cartridge for him to sign, so I just got an alien picture. Still, that's awesome. So, yeah. Joey, what but was like... your what was your first Metal Gear game that you ever played? Uh. Embarrassing enough, this this kind of is it. Like this was my kind of actual full-on introduction, as opposed to just going around to friends' house and watching them hide under a cardboard box and move. Uh, <laughs> this was the greatest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cardboard box, yes. And it's like <laughs> it's like you know, it was just brilliant. Um, I was, I, but I was I was just like, oh, the the story is like you know, one is a is a prequel to two, which is then a. Three is a sequel to one, and yeah. but still a prequel to two, and two uh, four is a, a sequel to two. Anyway, I don't know. It's all weird. But also, <laughs> uh, and this this one is like meant to be a sequ- a pre. Oh god, it's meant to be a, it's meant to be a sequel to one or something. A or pre- prequel I don't know. to six and a pre a prequel to the sequel to the prequel. I wonder sequel. if people like watch this in order. If it's like one of like those Star Wars things where it's like this is the <gasps> definitive way to play. Yeah, you know, you have to like play all these games in like a certain order. That could be really painful though. The graphics <laughs> jump from, oh, from yeah. Xbox 360 yeah. to S, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, talking about graphics, by the way, I oh my, so I haven't got an Xbox One yet. Mm-hmm. Or a PS4, or whatever, but like, oh my God, they are seriously like eking. It's just incredible. Like uh, the first thing that hit me was just the the graphics. Like, yeah, I I sound like I'm I'm like, I'm a kid back in the 80s or 90s again. Like, <laughs> oh my God, the graphics. But, uh, the, this Fox engine. Oh my God. It, it yeah, for a like, nine-year-old console, you know. It's yeah. Kind of- Bloody hell, and it was just insane. And then of course, amazing Keith from Sutherland was there. It was like this is just incredible, and um. But yeah, I kind of uh, had to quickly learn some of the, the, the uh, Josh. I'm sure you know the, the uni- universal rules of Metal Gear. Of, of, of exclamation! Yeah. Exclamation! Yeah. Like, being like, what? What do oh. I do? Yeah. Oh, and hold then, on! I'll try... give you something awesome real quick. What? Do you have an exclamation? If he has a real life exclamation, this is this yeah. Is really... it, it, what is he gonna pull out? Just hold it up. <laughs> What's that? Ooh! Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, did you get that at the con, Josh? Nice. Is that Josh, not awesome? That is awesome. It's awesome. Did you get that at the at the thing? The con. You mentioned? He's putting on his headset. For for our listening uh, 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 readers, viewers, they're not viewing. But the, for our listeners, the, the, Josh just showed up a picture of like a a Metal Gear with like an exclamation mark over its head, looking and at snake a snake standing yeah. there with a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like um yeah that was it's it's uh it was pretty awesome. I by the way Josh like um oh my god I just basically um I I try to be nice, you know, I try to be nice. I try to be like, you know, get <laughs> be like and put them into the hag lock like shh, 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 go to sleep, go to sleep. And then, like, <laughs> the, a little lullaby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you as you like, caress his hair like, as you're slowly so you're after, your mouth. like epic. <laughs> everybody's neck. Exactly. <laughs> After a while, you know, I went from you know all this like you know go to sleep, taste the rainbow to right. <laughs> uh, I, I don't care. I'm really sorry about your children, but I'm just it's just this. Just you're gonna wake up and fuck you. I just was going, <laughs> and my friend Chris was horrified at my my killing spree. <laughs> I was just like, but it's the only way to keep me quiet. I'm yeah. shit, I must have mafia enforced it in a previous life. But basically, <laughs> Uh, it was He's like putting a canary in their mouth. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but like, um, press press up now. But uh, yeah, it just was um, pretty good. Just even that standalone game, amazing. And it the only the thing is, it's kind of like it reminds me of Titanfall a wee bit. Now they put so much work into the assets for this one like island that I think is Guantanamo Bay, um, and um, is it? and then but. It's the one island, one level, but they've got like five ma- five mis- different missions on it. So it's a bit like yeah. Titanfall, where you have three maps or something, but then you can play it twice or a couple of times different ways. So it's it's one way I think they're getting around the whole massive work they have to do now to make the graphics eye-wateringly good. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was a very good game. I I do recommend. Even so was newbies. that the full game or was this a demo that that you played? It's like a, it's like a f- it's a mini game basically. It's just. It's just enough to get like a prequel, like it just to set up the the, to- the 
story for the the main game coming along, which is a very Japanese. Oh, and do you know, I really liked? This is why I really liked. It. It's very Japanese. It was very old school, yeah. old school Japanese gaming. Which I mean, you say Japanese gaming. That's what every. I mean, all games used to come from there, and all of the hilarious difficulty curves which we remember as kids. Yeah. Had us pounding the wall, going "Why?" <laughs> but like this, it it was like that. It was unforgiving, and it was so good that it was unforgiving. There wasn't any rege- was it? No, there wasn't any regenerative hell. I didn't. I mean, I mean, you just were like, you were seen, you were dead. You know, let's <laughs> <laughs> restart. And like, I'm the ch- oh, it was good. I recommend. It was very. Old. It kind of had that old school flavor. So yeah, that's no, actually very. Do, impressed. do they charge for this game? Does it cost? Yeah, it's like oh, uh, it's twenty. It's twenty pounds. So it's probably gonna be twenty dollars as well, or. Is it worth twenty bucks? bucks do you think? I mean, is yeah, it? I think if you really enjoy Metal Gear and it it would tide you over. It's got the five missions. It took me long enough to do the, the first one. Um, and I, you know, it it was good. And it was it was yeah. I would say yes. Uh, surprisingly yes. I <laughs> for someone who's never played Metal Gear, I was like, wow. Yeah. Are you gonna get That's into my... the series? I mean, did it introduce you? Like, are you gonna play any any yeah, of the others? Yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye out on this this game when it, the full game comes and. Um, I can't load it because Skype is eating my bandwidth. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll say I, later in the year. I think there's almost like the Gran Turismo thing. They did that, didn't they? Where they released a small game yeah. on the yeah, network, yeah, which is a cool way of doing it. But yeah, I, yeah. Wow. I don't like it. Don't like it. You don't like I, it. Don't like the way. Don't like the way that they split that up. And I don't like the way how they're charging for Ground Zeroes. Yeah, the, actually, you know what? To be fair, like. Um, it's. It, I was a bit like, really, like, fuck. This is just. It's kind of like a demo, but yeah. it's it's longer than a demo, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and there's, uh, but yeah. Have you played it, Josh? No, no, I haven't. So I, I mean, I can't speak to the fact that the game is good or bad, but I can speak to the fact that I don't like the that they have this this tiny section for twenty five bucks, yeah. and then they have another tiny section for forty bucks. What? So it's like, oh, really. Is yeah, there any then, overlap? If you get the forty, does it include the twenty five dollar content? I do not believe so. I believe you have to buy the two sets. So they're like episodes in other games. Uh, yeah, oh. except for they're full price basically. Yeah, that's true. Ground Zeroes mm-hmm. is only two hours long. They like admitted that early on, and I'm like, that oh, yeah. game should then be thirty dollars tops or or twenty five. You know, that's kind of an interesting thing. Is that like you know, like Joey, you had. You had a good experience with it. You had a fun couple of hours, but it was twenty five bucks. Do you feel like you got your money's worth out of that? I mean, paying you know ten, twelve dollars an hour is that worth it? Small asterisks. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm emulating this because actually I didn't buy it. My friend did. Oh, <laughs> so it's free happy. for you. But I know, yes. No, but I'm just it's good for free. I, is what you're saying? <laughs> it was. But I was thinking. No, but I was thinking of myself. Like, would I buy it on my PS3? And yeah. Um, almost tempted, almost. Um, I think though he was happy with it, and it's two hours, but it's kind of like two hours times four or five because you get to do the missions, um, like a different mission, you know, different all the different ways. You've got the main mission that's yeah. the story mission, and then you've got like four missions which are like go and pick up this, you know, kill this person or <laughs> these guards or this. So yeah, but I but I know you're right, Josh. Like I I, I do balk. At this, because it's kind of a bit of a dangerous territory when you're entering into when you're paying twenty five dollars for you know quite a small sliver. Yeah. And then the main game's going to come. I mean, what? How much is it going to cost? Forty <laughs> bucks. Thirty nine. Oh but really? Yeah. Oh, wow. At least on must... the Xbox One. <laughs> it must be. There we go. Old I... built buying power, keeping it down, keeping it low. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, the graphics don't look good for an Xbox One. I, I was really yeah. disappointed because it looks... It looks like a 360 title? It looks like a mid-generation 360 title. I was, really? I was really... Yeah, well, Joey's saying he loved the graphics. Like, yeah. At least the screenshots. They either they might be misleading, you know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know. That's for Ground Zeroes, though. I don't know if it's different. Well, I'd say... Um, yeah, it was good. I'd say... Definitely try and track down a 1080p uh, HD video of it. Even the cutscene in at the start was like, "What?" Yeah. Like, and also, do you want know, another nice return to the old school? Was just a epic FMV. Like it wasn't. It wasn't FMV. It was it was rendered in real time, but um, which was again amazing. I miss those. Me. You know, like yeah, I, I, yeah, those are fun. Yeah, 
It was brilliant. I, I, it was a nice little old school sort of thing. I, I think I like that. Maybe that. I think I'm. To be fair, that probably has coloured my um, perception a wee bit. But I did like the the old schoolness of it. You know, what was an awesome opening. Uh, was uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Did you guys ever play that? And I did, but I can't remember the beginning of it. Oh, the beginning, they just had like this awesome like orchestra music, and there's some soldiers that are riding on chocobos, and like oh. they're coming into battle, and it says like, it looks like a movie. I mean, it's shitty now, you know, like all the graphics, but back then it was like, this is a maze balls. <laughs> like, it gets you pumped, you know? Like, I miss those. Like, you're watching an opening video, and, and it gets you excited to play the game. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, you play South Park. I love that opening video. Oh, it's South amazing. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, I love opening videos. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It sets they, the tone. Well, I'm glad that at least Metal Gear, as you're saying, like has a hark back to the old school days. You know, it has a cool opening. So, that's cool. I but, think what they should do is, is go back and do like a 2D version of Metal Gear cool. again. Be good. Ooh, like a Castlevania kind of thing, where like they go back and like kind of have some classics and like the new stuff. If if you kind saw of... if you played the NES version, you'd just go. I, I fucking hate this game. <laughs> it's literally, you see, you get seen, you're basically dead, and there's these really annoying fucking German shepherds everywhere, and they, yeah. like, they like, sniff you out. They'll be, like, sleeping on the ground, and you, like, sneak them by, and they're, like, <laughs> awake and they'll exclamation point, and you're just like, oh, god damn it! How <laughs> much? So, um, I do want to shift topics a little bit. This is, mm -hmm. uh, this, this big news has happened since we last spoke. Um... This Oculus Rift buyout. Uh, so just to let our listeners know, Oculus Rift is this uh, 3D virtual reality headset. Um, there's been some development kits that have been released. Um, mm -hmm. They showed it off at different gaming conventions and stuff. Uh, a consumer version hasn't been made yet, but anyone can buy the developer kits. And people love it. They think it's the future of VR. There's games that are now being made for it. And Oculus Rift was the company that was making it, and they were growing and growing and growing. And now Facebook bought them for $2 billion dollars. Um, I know uh, we might be getting on our soapbox here, but I want to hear you guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Uh, WTF? <laughs> it's like, it, it be cray cray, it be cray cray. That's all I'm just like, so that's, yeah. I, that's I hate thing. it. It's, I mean, is it, is it, is it, do you hate it, or is it crazy because of Facebook? Like, like if a Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, or Valve bought it, would that be okay? No, only Valve. Cause Only Valve, huh? Everybody Ooh. else would just try to f with it, like, yeah. you know what I mean? They would like, eh, we could price gut this a little bit or whatever, you know. And then it's all janked up. It's like the Connect One, you know, <laughs> like yeah. barely works. And you're just like, damn it, or the Move. That was a disaster. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Valve is the only one who could really, you know, work with that. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that it's Facebook, you know, like, Facebook has had no no input into gaming, and all of a sudden they bought, like, the number one VR maker, you know, and they say that they're going to run independently, and, you know, and a lot of companies do this, they buy out other companies and they just want some of their profits, so they want to influence them a little bit, but they're entirely run independently, and that's how they say this is going to go, but, I mean, I, th I don't think it's such a bad idea, actually, Man. Man. And, and we might debate about this because... I think I think for Oculus Rift to really be a mainstream in the home product, they needed to get bought out by someone. And getting bought out by Facebook, Facebook has the funds to make it a reality. And Facebook has definitely made mistakes in the past, but they've also, I think, done a lot of good things in terms of getting mass market appeal to stuff. And they've they've fucked up before like privacy policies and everything, and they have listened to customers and changed those. So I, I wouldn't call Facebook in like the evil camp, you know, like I, where they're I'm not gonna like. I'm saying they're evil. Yeah, I, I I think that they I think that they could take Oculus Rift to the next level. I think this is gonna kill Oculus Rift. Really, really. Look at the backlash that's happened. Every gamer's like, this is, and now that Sony's developing their own, and everybody's gonna start getting into this. Yeah, yeah. Oculus Rift is gonna go by the wayside. I, I almost guarantee it that they're gonna be washed well, away. So kind of the craziness of this, um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but uh, it started off as a Kickstarter project. In fact, it's the number one uh, biggest Kickstarter project that's ever been there. They raised $10 million, which yep. is just unheard of for Kickstarter at the time. And um, there's a bunch of people that, that basically pre-ordered it on Kickstarter. 
and they were waiting for consumer versions, so they plunked down two or three hundred bucks, whatever it was, and uh, there was something like ten thousand people that plunked down three hundred bucks for a consumer version, and they've been waiting patiently, you know, and they've been following the news and everything, and eager to see all the new advancements, and now after the buyout, there's no plan to refund those people or give them a free Oculus. Yeah. So this is why it's going to kill been in the, Oculus. It's, it's, it's been it's in the dark, you know. I, I mean. What what is that? That's just like a few million dollars, and they got two billion. I think that they should just refund people's money or give them free ones when it comes out. But they need to communicate that out to those backers, and the, a lot of the backers are rightfully pissed. You know, I I agree. This is another reason why Oculus is gonna get is gonna get rolled is because that is horrible PR. You already have bad PR from getting bought out by Facebook. People yeah, don't, gamers don't like Facebook in general. I, I think as as a whole. Like, they see it as, like, I don't Well, they probably don't like, like, the, the integration in Facebook and stuff. I mean, I think a lot of gamers probably have a Facebook account, you know? Oh, I agree, like, but I don't think they like particularly Facebook as a company, you know what I mean? Like, they're... Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, they're so great for, you know, Castleville and all this shit, you know? Yeah, the Candy Castleville Crush. games, yeah, the Candy Crush. Farmville and stuff. Yeah, I, don't, I think, like, people already dislike Facebook, and then... Oculus deciding to not back these Kickstarter or you know pay back these Kickstarter people is just un. It's just a terrible PR all the way around, and it's yeah. gonna, it's going to hurt Oculus, I think greatly. I, I think it was a bad bad choice. What do you think, Joey? What's your thoughts? It. Uh, I'm trying to think. What are they doing it for investment? Are they doing it? Because it does seem like a completely left field kind of purchase. Um, I mean, well, they've they just had... bought. They've just bought um, uh, WhatsApp. Which yeah, it so made Facebook's... more waves here. Yeah, Facebook's kind of on a buying spree lately, and yeah. rumors were going around that as recently as two or three weeks before the merger, that's when uh, Mark Zuckerberg went out to Oculus and talked with them. So th this deal happened quickly. Oculus was already really successful. I mean, they were already raising like a lot of funding. Um, like millions and millions of dollars in funding from different investment partners, not just like Kickstarter backing. So it wasn't like they were in the hole and they were looking for buyers. Um, Facebook mm. probably just came to them and said, hey, we'll pay $2 billion. And they were like, hells yeah. yeah. And I don't blame them. I mean, like anybody that would not take $2 billion is a liar. Okay, yeah. like, like get the I hell agree. out of here. Like, like that, I mean, we can't blame... Uh, what's his name? Palmer Lucky, I think, is the CEO or founder of it. Um, to to you know accept that. I mean, that's that's a ridiculously large amount of money. Some people think that they could have held out and got more. You know, maybe after they release a the consumer version and it does well. Um, but yeah, but what if it doesn't? Then <laughs> yeah, what if it doesn't? And I mean, like, I, you know, what, what's that saying? Like a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I mean, like, yeah, somebody's somebody's wanting two billion dollars in front of your face. I mean, like, you'd be dumb not to take it. Mm. Yeah, I I agree that that it's a smart deal to just be bought out. But I feel like the, I feel like this is now Facebook's bad investment. <clears throat> like yeah, because they bought it, people aren't gonna go aren't like yeah they're the independent underdog that's gonna you know do all this good stuff. Now they're like oh it's effing Facebook and I don't really care. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's interesting because a lot of companies, when they have, like, billions of dollars just sitting in the bank and they're not spending it, investors get kind of worried. You yeah. know, they're like, what are you going to spend it on? And, I mean, what do people buy stuff? They buy other companies, you know, and they kind of, like, see where that's going. And sometimes they're good investments, sometimes they're not. But, I mean, it's not unheard of. I mean, it happens all the time where a company will buy another company and they, it dies, you know? The product just kind of dies. It just gets merged out. Or... Or the the product gets merged in with other teams, you know, into like some grand vision. Maybe that's Facebook's what they're doing. But Facebook Rift. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what's <laughs> gonna be weird. It's like, are we gonna be like browsing our our feed, you know, with like our virtual gonna, reality headsets? I don't it's know. It's gonna be like what what's face Rift or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think actually I think this is pretty cool. So this and this is why I'm kind of positive or bullish on this is that. Uh, Oculus has really targeted gamers, mm -hmm. first and foremost. There's been a lot of games that have been in development for this. Um, Facebook wants to do other types of experiences in addition to games. So they've talked about, like, what if there was, um, like, the 3D cameras or multiple 3D cameras that were at a sporting event in the prime seat, 
And then now you can put on your Oculus Rift and you can look all around the sporting event and you're right there, like in the center spot. I mean, that's something that Oculus was probably thinking about. They they had some concepts of like sitting in a movie theater, you know, and then you see like the screen in front of you. But I mean, what if you could like, you know, check out the, your hotel room? What if you could check out, you know, the beach or, you know, or do these different types of experiences in virtual reality? I think that having somebody as large as Facebook can make that happen sooner rather than later. That'd be so, so it'd be cool. It'd be cool if they, they turn that into like an Iron Man three kind of interface going through your yeah. Facebook stuff. You could be like looking up, going, "Oh, there's uh, there's that person's album," and this is, that'd be kind of this cool. This person's actually. having a baby, you know, like like oh, no, no, no. look at all the baby pictures. Okay, done. Yeah, look at all these dog pictures. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Like Minority <laughs> Report, you know, like moving it all around and stuff. Yeah, that'd well, be that'd be cool. I mean, yeah. In that case, you'd have to wear like some sort of glove that's like. <laughs> you know, like pulling stuff down and <laughs> moving around. Anyway, I, I don't know. I feel like this is a bad choice now for Facebook. But yeah, you know, Oculus just made paper. They're like, make it rain. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's weird is that <laughs> what's, like, cra- it. what's crazy is that a lot of times when a company buys another company, they have a product, they have users, mm-hmm. and Oculus just has. I'm throwing this out there. I don't know the numbers, but let's say they have like twenty thousand development kits out there. No consumer version. Yeah. And there's been a lot of interest. There's been a lot of news and a lot of hype. But $2 billion for a product that has never seen the light of day is crazy. Mm. That's, that's really high. Well, I mean, you remember how bad the Rift booth was last year at PAX. Like, oh, it was like a five-hour line. It like the entire time, basically. Yeah. I mean, what? And that was for the newer version that, that people can't get yet. But that was like, it was crazy long. Yeah. It was, I, I don't know, there is support there, but I feel like with Sony entering the game, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's all going to come down to price point, you know? Like, if if they're going to charge $500 for an accessory, nobody's going to get it. If yeah. they charge, you know, two ninety nine, and there's some great games coming out for it, and there's the support of the companies like Sony or Microsoft or whoever, I think it could be successful, and I would be in line to get one, but... Yeah, I mean, if this is like, oh, this is browsing your Facebook wall feed, and this is its killer feature, you know, like, yeah. I don't care. So. I, I don't know. To me, I just, I, I, when I saw that, I went, eh, okay, I'm not really that interested anymore, but maybe I shouldn't just blow it off that, you know, that fast. Joey, would you buy one? I guess that's the end of the, end of the question. Uh, no. <laughs> and. No, uh, but you know what? One thing, we're th- one thing that, that could slide and lock into this is, what if Nintendo leave the console business and then they go, well, we want an interesting interface where we can just put our games onto Oculus Rift or something. You yeah. know what I mean? They, they might. You never know. That might be the killer thing in the future. It might become Nintendo's. Th- you know what I mean? Like that would be cool. That'd be awesome. Like Zelda in you know oh! first person you know adventure. That'd be amazing. Balls. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So- I don't know. I feel like I feel like Carmichael. He left uh, id right, and he seemed very <laughs> upset about this. Like that he wasn't like consulted at all about the buyout. Like he yeah, have you heard about that? By it, and he was like, "Wait, I didn't get talked to at all about it." So did you hear about that? With, with the creator? <laughs> so uh, the creator Doom, right, Josh? Yep. Okay, so yeah. he's like. He's this OG badass programmer. I mean, he is like your your classic like nerd awesome geek that's like super smart. And he founded yeah. ID, who made Doom, mm-hmm. and he worked at ID for years and years and years. And he's always trying to like push the envelope in terms of graphics and everything. He'd worked there forever, and then he left ID to go join up with Oculus Rift as their chief technology officer. Yeah, like and you three sure, weeks before this all went down. And this guy is a multimillionaire. I mean, and and he had no reason to go there for the money. He went there for the experience and for like pushing yeah, the envelope yeah. and new technologies. And he had been there a number of months, and then now all of a sudden, and he's all about like the startup, you know, and like the future and everything. And then now this is getting bought up by like the mega corporation of Facebook. And yeah, I'm kind of with Josh. Like he kind of did like a public statement, and he didn't really seem very like. Genuinely enthusiastic, I guess. You know, yeah. like just like I I look forward to the partnership that we are going to have. You know, yeah, and it's like, like, it was like very like cordial. With a cue card in front of him, and he's yeah, I know, right? of You it. will say this. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I, don't know. I feel like he might go back to ID. 
Like, uh, yeah, you might. Uh, yeah. Or or go somewhere else. But who knows? Yeah. But I don't anyway. Know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. it for the show today. Woo! Oh yeah. I know you're on a yeah. deadline, John. I'm trying to get you out on time. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going wine tasting later today. So. Oh, yeah. so classy. Whoa. Whoa. Fancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John's going to get trashed. <laughs> on, on it's it's going to start fancy and end messily. Trajectory. I was going to say, you're going to wake up with pajamas on backwards and your glasses yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Awesome. Well, then I, I, will, I, will definitely, I will definitely like that status. That's for that sure. <laughs> My oh, Oculus Rift uh, goggles with my face. Yeah, on. let's experience that <laughs> night, you know, in our <laughs> Oculus Rift first person. Oh, yeah, okay, that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ends this episode of the Guys with Glasses <laughs> podcast. I'm Bandito John. No name Josh. And why is Judy? Signing See you guys later. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Meow. <laughs>